Good morning, everybody. I am Mr. St. Germain. And I am Mrs. McNeese. And I am Miss Tom Bukaitis. Welcome to Live from the Library, episode number four. Woo! Wow. And we've got a lot we're going to be talking about, as you can see right here, and we're just going to get started. So um, I've been doing uh, some exploring of fun things to do for um, for being outside. And I found three great apps that you may want to, especially if you're a science kind of person, that you might want to start using. One is called Science Journal, and it's actually a Google product. And you can see the link down below, and we will include it in our end notes. It's very cool. And if you have a cell phone, a smartphone, it uses all the tools in your phone <coughs> to record all kinds of data. And so you can conduct interesting science experiments with sound and light and movement. You can record your findings. You could suggest all different kinds of experiments. So um, I, I can't even begin to dig into what it will do for you in terms of science. If you are a person who likes to investigate things and record what you're seeing, which is, uh, which is uh, one of the first steps of becoming a great scientist, it's helps you record those observations in a really organized and fun way. Two other apps that I found, uh, one is called Merlin Bird ID by Cornell Labs. So Cornell uh, University has a, um, a great ornithology department, study of birds. And this lets you identify, it asks you five questions to help you identify a bird that you might see in your yard. You can also upload a picture and it will do its best to immediately identify that bird. They have another app and that app is available, both all these apps are available on um, Apple and on um, Android, but um, Merlin uh, Cornell Labs also has another application that will record the sound of a bird and you send it up and it will identify the bird by the sound. Is that what you're holding up, Mrs. McNeese? Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, that only works, the, the bird sound identifier only works on Android phones right now. And I think they're working on another. And for those of you who like things that don't move so much, uh, there's something called PlantNet. And PlantNet, it, you uh, can take pictures of plants and it will identify the plant for you. Um, especially helpful if you're looking at poison ivy and I'm sure if it's poison ivy or not. So uh, we will have these in our resources. Take a look. These are really fun, exciting applications that get you outside. You could still have a little bit of technology with you. They get you outside looking at the real world. All right, and I know the weather is going to be beautiful this week, but if you're looking for a little fun thing to do extra, um, we are going to host a Stranger Things digital escape room on Thursday from 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, it takes about 30 minutes to solve the escape room. Um, and so we'll probably be online a little bit longer than that. Um, but you could take your Chromebook out in your yard if you have Wi-Fi out out in your yard and participate in our Stranger Things digital escape room. So you, this does require a sign up. Um, you can either get um, an email from your librarian, check your library website, or at the bottom of this slide, there is a bit.ly. Um, once you sign up to participate, you'll receive the Google Meet link that we'll be using to host the escape room. So I hope we get lots of people to sign up. Stranger Things escape room, Thursday at three. When are you sending those responses out? Would it be right away or? It won't be until Wednesday. Until Wednesday, okay. At the end of the day on Wednesday. All right, so I am so excited that um, we are hopefully gonna be meeting with Dusty Bowling tomorrow for our Wednesday virtual author visit. Um, and she is the author of quite a few books. The one that we are gonna be focusing on and a lot of people have read is Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus. So let's watch Dusty's book talk that she recorded for our Flipgrid. Hello, West Hartford Middle School. My name is Dusty Bowling, and I'm here to tell you about my book, Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus, which tells the story of 13-year-old Avon Green, who was born without arms, and her parents move her from Kansas to Arizona because they've taken jobs running this rundown Western-themed amusement park called Stagecoach Pass. And she has a little bit of trouble adjusting to the new environment and new school kids who have never maybe even seen anybody like her before. And then she meets a boy named Connor and they become friends and they solve a mystery together at 
the theme park. So I hope you enjoy this story. It was inspired by a lot of really cool people that you can look up and maybe research, uh, like Barbie Thomas, who is a bodybuilder who lives here in Arizona, and she is a bodybuilder who doesn't have arms. And Jessica Cox, who also lives here, here in Arizona, and she is a motivational speaker who can fly a plane with her feet. She has her pilot's license. And Tisha Shelton, who does a series online called Tisha Unarmed. So you are able to look up and, and research all of the amazing things that people without arms do. And they inspired the character of Avon in the story. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a really wonderful rest of the school year. Thank you for watching. Bye. So how amazing does that sound? And this book um, has been one of my favorite books since it was published. There is a sequel that just came out this last fall called Momentous Events in the Life of a Cactus and Avon Goes um, Up to High School. I really recommend this book for any reader who loves to read about characters um, that are just good people about what it's like to have to move and start over and have that added layer that something's a little different um, about you from most of the rest of the kids around you and how do you use that to become a stronger person. Um, I do also wanna share, um, I lived in Arizona for six years. I lived in Phoenix. And so a lot of the stuff that she talks about in Arizona and the setting um, is very familiar to me. So that was one of the parts that I also loved reading. Um, and something that's not so great about Arizona is every year there are wildfires that affect the desert um, in California and New Mexico and Arizona. And right now, um, if you've been watching any news or media, um, there's a there's a wildfire that has started around the Phoenix area and very close to where Dusty lives. So we're still waiting to hear if she is able to join us tomorrow. We may have to postpone, but just keep her and her family in your thoughts and um, everybody who's living in that area because that is such a, a scary event to have to experience. So we really hope um, Dusty and her family are doing okay. So um, those of you who did sign up, I will be sending an email first thing tomorrow morning to everybody who's on the Google form with an update and if we will be able to do it tomorrow at 1130 or if we'll have to reschedule. And if you haven't signed up yet, the, the bit.ly is right there. You can go on and um, if you are outside of West Hartford, you'll have to get in touch with me and I will share information for joining that Google Meet if you are interested. So thank you. Um, I'm very excited about getting to meet Dusty and I have lots of questions for her. So we should think about posting if we have to postpone that. Yes. Yep. Yeah, well, I'm I'm hoping to hear back from her sometime today, but um, if we don't hear from her, we know why, and we'll just have to make that decision um, tomorrow morning. And we and will. we can post it on our library websites. Yep, we'll do both, correct. Very good. All right, so we did send out a student needs survey to try to see what you guys need um, while you're distance learning. And we got lots of interesting responses. It's not too late to fill out the form. So if you haven't filled it out yet, um, it's not too late. You can find it in your email um, or maybe a link under this video once it's posted. Um, one of the first things that stuck out to us is that people want real print books, not only digital books, they want real print books. So of course, that leads to our next slide. <laughs> da -da -da. Da -da -da. Book mail. Book mail. <laughs> so lots of opportunities to get book mail. Um, I actually came across three in my book haul copies of The Right Hook of Devin Velma that I will be happy to send to people. Um, I put a, a bit.ly at the bottom of this slide. Um, if you haven't taken advantage of book mail yet, it's a little slow through the mail, but we are sending books out to you. It's um, not that slow because when I send from where I live in Brantford, which is in Southern Connecticut, sometimes the books get to the students the day after up in West Hartford that I get an email. So maybe my mail carriers are just working super extra hard down here to get my books because they know how important it is for me to get my books out to students. <laughs> Well, that may be true. Mine are taking about a week to get to my kids in West Hartford. I live in Weathersfield, so I don't, I don't know. Um, you can see Belinda got book mail this week. Miss, um, a Bristow student, Miss Tom, who's up? Who's oh, not student? Belinda. Um, nope, that's Claire. No, my Belinda got fake ID. Oh, and Claire. Claire. Um, one of our 
we're definitely still sending out lots of books by mail. Um, and there's another bunch of books we're about to tell you about. Yes. Like right now? Yeah, I think like right now. <laughs> so um, this month, May, is Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And we just wanted to uh, make sure that we point that out and share some amazing titles by authors who would fall into this category of being Asian or Pacific American. So um, we are gonna do very, very brief, like 30 second book talks about some of these books. All right, I'm gonna start with the first one, Everlasting Nora. This is by Marie Miranda Cruz. And after a family tragedy results in the loss of both her father and her home, 12 year old Nora lives with her mother in Manila's North Cemetery, which is the largest shanty town of its kind in the Philippines today. Then her mother mysteriously disappears and she's left alone. So um, working with her best friend and her kind hearted grandmother, she uh, embarks on a journey that's full of danger in order to find her mom. And along the way, she discovers all kinds of things about herself and about the place that she lives and just discovers things about hope. Um, just reading about this book, I'm very excited. I I've not read it yet, but I'm very excited to read this one. On the total opposite end of the spectrum is Stand Up, Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. And this one, it, but when you see the word stand up, of course, you're thinking of comedy. So we're like totally the opposite of the everlasting Nora story. But this girl is also suffering a lot of problems of being a, in being a shy girl. She's got a really horrible permanent. It just didn't work out. They <laughs> can tease her. They call her you meat because her family, she smells like her family's Korean barbecue restaurant because she's there a lot. But on the inside, she really wants to be a stand-up com comedian. And she's got uh, a notebook full of stories that she's recorded of terrifying memories, but that she's changed them into comedy as part of her routine that she'd eventually like to do. All she needs is a stage and courage. So read on more to find out about Yumi Chung. Okay, and I'm gonna do a quick book talk for I'm Okay and Hello Universe. So I'm Okay, I actually have a copy that's included in book mail this week. If you wanna win a copy of this very funny book called I'm Okay by Patty Kim. Um, with his father gone and his mother working three jobs, he okay, which is his first name, okay Lee knows he has to help pay the bills. Um, if he had any talent, he'd enter the school talent contest and earn the cash prize, but unfortunately he feels that that's not an option. So he starts a hair braiding business. Um, hair braiding doesn't pay very well, though, and it attracts him some unwanted attention at school. Um, and when the deacon at his Korean church starts flirting with his mom, his troubles just keep increasing. So in a very honest and funny way um, is the story of O.K. Lee called I'm O.K. Hello Universe by Erin Entrada Kelly won the Newbery Medal in 2018. This is a story that's a little hard to describe. So there's four kids, um, and when a, a prank by a bully goes wrong, um, Virgil, a very quiet kid, and his pet rat go missing. Um, and it's up to four kids who weren't previously friends, whose paths sort of intersect during this one day, to figure out what happened to Virgil and see if they will be able to rescue him. So over the course of one day, they have to figure out why Virgil disappeared and try to rescue him. It's um, Hello Universe by Aaron and Trada Kelly. And I think Mrs. Tom has a copy to give away. I do. It's Mrs. right Tom. here. So, and I have a few copies. So if you fill out the book raffle form and that's one you choose, I will be able to send you a copy. Um, so I am super excited to do the last two book talks. The first one is Prairie Lotus by Linda Sue Park. And this book is new. It just came out this spring, I think at the beginning of April. And some of you might be familiar with the author. She is the author of um, A Long Walk to Water. A lot of sixth graders in West Hartford read that book. Um, so this is the same author. This is historical fiction. And if you have ever heard of the Laura Ingalls Wilder series and Little House on the Prairie, um, this is a book that is at that si same time period in the late 1800s. And it is kind of giving us a, a deeper perspective um, of that time period. And there's been some critical um, feedback for Little House on the Prairie and how people have been represented um, as far as Native Americans and African Americans at that time. So there's a lot of conversation and this book is really important and just an amazing story. And it's about a, a girl who has to move from California with her father to North Dakota. And there um, she is half Chinese and half white. 
and there are very, very few people that look like her living in North Dakota on the Great Plains during the late 1800s. And it's um, Linda Sue Park, The one of my favorite actually parts about this book is her author's note at the end. And she explains why she wrote it. And she grew up um, half Korean, half um, white, I believe, um, in the United States. And she always felt like she didn't belong in either group. And so her character, um, Hannah, is experiencing that same thing. And so she talks about um, how she loved Little House on the Prairie when she was little. It was one of her favorite books um, and series. And she she always knew that there was, there was something a little bit off with it, but she couldn't really figure out what that was until she became an adult and started kind of critically looking at it. And so she wrote this book as sort of a love letter, both to that and to kind of... Um, remedy almost or make up for that misrepresentation of people of color that um, Laura Ingalls Wilder did back in the in the when she wrote it which was a long time ago um, so I highly highly recommend this book and I can't wait to share it with whoever wins um, the book raffle this this um, week and then the second book I don't have um, I can't read the cover because it's gift wrapped um, but it is keep it together Keiko Carter and this is by um, a Connecticut author, which is so exciting. Um, Debbie and I, Florence, Mil or M Michaco Florence, I think. I don't know how you say I can't, it's so small. I can't see it on um, the screen, but Florence is a, the last name. And I won this as a Twitter raffle prize, which was so exciting. And they sent it to me gift wrapped because a book is a gift um, through the mail from the Mystic Independent Bookstore um, down in Mystic. And this is a book about a girl who is going into, she's in middle school. She's had two best friends. She's kind of the center they came together because of her, but they are not alike in really any way. And they kind of start experiencing some growing pains in this beginning of um, their school year um, as I think seventh graders. And it's just a great story about friendship and how sometimes friendship changes and how we change when we get into middle school and how that can kind of affect um, our, our bigger life. So such a good realistic fiction book. This also just came out, I think in the beginning of this month. So um, I am excited to share this book with people as well. All right. And I will put, uh, for Bristow, I will put that link to um, the bit.ly for this raffle in Classroom, Google Classroom, as well as I'll try to post it at the top of my library website if you did not write down the bit.ly, so. Okay, that's good. Th good thing. And for Sedgwick, I will post it on the library website as well. So um, just in case you're looking for some of the things that we talked about, just remember to look in the notes uh, on the YouTube channel. There are notes for, for each of our episodes of Live from the Library. And we want to thank you again for attending uh, episode four. Yes, thank you. So much stuff to share. We went a little longer than our 15 minutes, but all good stuff. So many good books. That's right. And remember, if you get book mail, take a picture of yourself receiving it and send it to us. So we'd like to celebrate you on the slideshow every week. Yes. Have a great week, and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow with Dusty Bowling at 1130. Bye. Bye.